Hello students, welcome to Learners Planet. This is our fifth theory session for atoms and molecules. In this session, we are going to discuss about atomic mass. That is atomic mass of an element. That is a mass of each atom of an element. So previously, when uh, some elements, the atom of some elements were used as a reference atom or you were used for reference like hydrogen 1. That is a mass of elements were given with respect to the hydrogen. That is how many times that atom of that particular element is heavier than hydrogen. Right? That is a number of times a particular atom is heavier than the hydrogen atom. Later on the reference atoms were changed and these days carbon 12 atom is used as a reference. Say if I am saying night sodium has the atomic mass of 23 amu it means it is 23 times the mass of 1 by 12 of 1 carbon 12 atom or it is 23 times or its mass is exactly equal to 23 amu and 1 amu is ex exactly equal to 1 twelfth the mass of 1 c12 atom these days students the mass is determined by mass spectroscopy right there is also a term that is average atomic mass. Now that average atomic mass is determined by taking into account the existence of the isotopes and their relative percent occurrence. So we will be discussing about atomic mass in this session and also about the molecules. So let's start our session here. See the atomic weight scale has traditionally been a relative scale. Why so? Because atoms are very very small. And it was difficult to determine the mass of an atom. So what was done that the mass of hydrogen atom, this was taken as one. And the other atoms were expressed in number of times they were heavy from the hydrogen atom. That is the atomic weight scale has traditionally been a relative scale. That is without an explicit unit. With the first atomic weight basis suggested by John Dalton in 1803 as hydrogen 1. Despite the initial mass of hydrogen 1 being used as natural unit for atomic weight, it was suggested by Wilhelm Oswald that atomic weights would be best expressed in terms in units of 1 by 16 the weight of oxygen. See hydrogen atom which was used at that time, it was very very small. So Willem Oswald suggested that atomic weight can be best expressed in terms of units of 1 by 16 the weight of oxygen. That is 1 by 16th of the weight of one oxygen atom. But what happened soon is later the isotopes of oxygen were discovered. That is there are two isotopes of oxygen O16 and O18. Now what are isotopes? Isotopes are the atoms of the same element having to having different atomic masses that is to say O16 and O18. So both are oxygen but their atomic masses are different. One is 16 and other is 18. They have got same atomic number. So due to this what happened that which oxygen to be taken as a reference. Now that led to the errors in the computations. So later what happened that the reference was changed to carbon 12 atom. The reference was changed to carbon-12 in 1961. Carbon-12 atom has been assigned an atomic mass of exactly 12 atomic units. That is carbon atom, carbon-12 atom, what is the weight assigned? It is 12 AMU. Now what is AMU? Earlier abbreviated as AMU. AMU is what? Atomic mass unit. A new symbol U was recommended by IUPAC. Now what this U stands for? U stands for Unified Atomic Mass Unit. Now what is its value equal to? One atomic mass unit is a mass unit exactly equals to or equals to exactly it is exactly equals to. So one atomic mass unit is a mass unit exactly equal to or which exactly equals to 1 by 12th the mass of one atom of carbon 12. The relative atomic masses of all elements have been found with respect 
to an atom of carbon 12. So whatever atomic masses are found of the other elements, they are the relative atomic masses. Right? And that is with respect to one atom of carbon 12. The relative atomic mass of the atom of an element is defined as the average mass of the atom as compared to 1 by 12th, the mass of 1 carbon 12 atom. That is average mass of the atom. Now how is this average mass of atom determined? Average mass of an atom is determined by taking into account the existence of the isotopes and their relative percent occurrence. Let's take an example. Say chlorine. Chlorine has got two isotopes Cl35 units and Cl37 units. Now this exists in the ratio of 3 is to 1. So what will be the average atomic mass of chlorine? Average atomic mass of chlorine. So this is equal to 35 into 3 plus 37 into 1 divided by 4. So now if you calculate this, this comes out to be 35.5 U. That is, the mass of chlorine is 35.5 times the mass of the mass of 1 by 12th of carbon 12 atom. Right? It is times the mass of 1 12th of the carbon 12 atoms. Right? Or it is exactly equal to 1 12th the mass of carbon 12 atom. That will be better. So it is 35.5 times the 1 12th of the mass of C12 atom. So this is how the average atomic mass is calculated first and then the relative atomic mass is given. So this is what it says. The relative atomic mass of the atom of an element is defined as the average mass of the atom as compared to 1 12th the mass of 1 carbon 12 atom. Now it has been found experimentally that mass of carbon 12 atom is 1.9926 into 10 to the power minus 23 gram. So it was found experimentally. The unified atomic mass unit is 1 by 12 of mass of carbon 12 atom, right? So what is U equal to? 1 by 12 of mass of carbon 12 atom. If this value is divided by 12, the absolute value comes out to be 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 gram. So what is the value of 1 U? 1 U is 1.660 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams, right? Say if the mass of we had taken this uh, mass of chlorine only. Say what is it? It is 35.5 units. And 1 U is equal to 1 by 12 of the mass of carbon 12 atom. Right? So it will be 35.5 multiplied by 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams. So this will be the mass of carbon, this mass of chlorine, right? So what is the value of students? You should remember this value of one atomic mass unit. That is, it is 1.660 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams. I hope you have understood this. These are the atomic masses of few elements. Hydrogen, 1. Carbon, 12. These are in units, right? Carbon, 12. Nitrogen, 14. Oxygen 16, sodium 23 units, magnesium 24U, that is unified atomic mass unit, sulfur 32 units, 32U, and uh, chlorine 35.5U, calcium 40U. Right? Now there is one more term, students, that is called as gram atomic mass. What is it? Or gram molecular mass. Gram atomic mass. It is the amount of substance in 
grams whose weight is numerically equal to to the atomic mass that is the relative atomic mass so amount of substance in grams whose weight is numerically equal to the atomic mass say the atomic mass of oxygen is 16 u so what will be its gram atomic mass it is the amount of substance whose weight is numerically equal to the atomic mass so it should be 16 grams likewise it is gram molecular weight also it is a weight of substance whose weight in grams or the amount of substance whose weight in grams is numerically equal to numerically equal to its molecular mass now here it is amount of substance or amount of element it can be anything right say so the relative molecular mass of this sub compound will be the atomic mass of sulfur is 32 units or 32 u plus it's not units it's exactly u unified atomic mass i can write it as amu also and 2 into 16 u so it comes out to be 32 plus 32 so it is 64 u or it is 64 amu now what will be the gram molecular mass of so2 the gram molecular mass of so2 will be equal to how much 64 grams that is the molecular mass that is amount of substance in grams whose weight is numerically equal to its molecular mass so this is what is atomic mass the gram atomic mass and the gram molecular mass now let's take up the molecules a molecule is the smallest particle of a substance that is it can be an element or compound which has the properties of that substance and can exist in free state that is a molecule can exist in a free state say for example nitrogen gas it has got what molecules nitrogen molecules sulfur the molecules present here are s8 right hydrogen gas it has got what all molecules h2 so these molecules they have got the properties of that particular substance it is an electrically neutral group of two or more atoms chemically bonded together so it is electrically neutral also that is nitrogen and nitrogen they'll bond and they'll form what the nitrogen molecule now what is a bond a bond is the force which holds the atoms together right a force it's written over here the force which holds the atoms together in a molecule is called a bond right now let's study about molecules of elements molecules of elements the molecule of an element consists of two similar atoms chemically combined together that is see the molecule of hydrogen it has got two similar atoms of hydrogen and these are chemically bonded together now the bond is represented by a single line right nitrogen it has got two atoms of nitrogen bonded by single bond oxygen it has got two atoms bonded by a single bond likewise chlorine molecule it is having two atoms of chlorine bonded by a single bond right likewise students say sulfur sulfur exists in the form of s8 so how many atoms will be bonded together eight atoms are bonded together and they'll form a bond six here and two behind phosphorus it exists as p4 four atoms are bonded together 
and they are forming what the phosphorus molecule these are the phosphorus right so a molecule of an element consists of what similar atoms chemically combined together the number of atoms present in one molecule of an element is called its atomicity so in the previous case here what is the atomicity of hydrogen molecule it's 2 atomicity of oxygen molecule it's again 2 atomicity of nitrogen molecule 2 chlorine molecule is also 2 atomicity of sulfur is 8 because there are 8 atoms in one sulfur molecule phosphorus the atomicity is 4 So the number of atoms of an element in a molecule is called its atomicity. Likewise, see there are molecules of compounds also. The molecule of a compound contains two or more different types of atoms. Now, in the molecule of an element, what was there? There were two or more similar atoms. whereas in a compound there are what there are two or more dissimilar atoms right now they combine in a simple whole number ratio by mass we started uh, the law of constant proportions what the law states that the elements combine in a definite ratio by mass to form a compound and what is a molecule of the of a compound it is the smallest entity which has all the properties of a compound so a molecule of a compound is what it is the smallest entity which has all the properties of a compound like hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid contains atoms of hydrogen and chlorine chemically bonded together this molecule it can exist free secondly it has all the properties of hcl that is hydrochloric acid right and hydrogen and chlorine they combine in a definite ratio see so what was the law of constant proportion that whatever by whatever mode a compound is obtained its properties remain the same likewise water is a compound a molecule of water that is h2o is made up of hydrogen and oxygen like say a molecule of ammonia now what is it made up of it is made up of nitrogen and hydrogen they are combined in a definite ratio likewise hydrogen sulfide this is what this is hydrogen sulfide so the atoms of the element are combined in a definite ratio right so this is a molecule what else h2s hcl it is forming a number of compounds it is uh, also forming h2o it is forming nah it is forming cah right or uh, it is uh, forming uh, this thing be or bh3 boron hydride or alh3 likewise students these elements they combine and they form the molecule the atoms of element sorry the atoms of elements they combine and they form the molecule the atoms either they are similar atoms they combine and form the molecule of an element or dissimilar atoms they combine and form the molecule of a compound nacl becl2 pcl4 these are all the atoms of the different elements which combine and they form the molecule right now students say there is one question that there is no compound of helium known there is no compound of neon known it's, it is not known right or they do not form compounds whereas the com the elements like hydrogen sulfur chlorine boron beryllium lithium sodium potassium calcium magnesium they all form compounds now why so why is it so that helium and neon they are not forming any bond 
whereas the other elements they are forming bonds now let's study this why do atoms combine to form or molecules why do atoms combine the atoms of noble gases have stable ns2 np6 this you'll be uh, studying in details in your grade 11 you just keep in mind that which are having eight electrons in their outermost shell right their octet that is or duet in case of helium is complete therefore they do not combine see here helium there are two electrons in the outermost shell but if I take up hydrogen here it has got only one electron in its outermost shell whereas this neon neon has got eight electrons in its outermost shell right atoms of other elements combine in order to complete their respective octet that is atom try to attain eight electrons in their outermost shell they try to complete their octet either by gaining losing or sharing electrons now let's first study the concept of this thing atomic number then only you'll be understanding the distribution of electrons in different shells now students see an atom consists of what the central nucleus in which there are surrounding electrons the electrons are revolving around the nucleus here are the electrons now in the nucleus there are how many electrons and protons there are eight sorry there are eight neutrons sorry there are neutrons and protons what is there in the nucleus there are neutrons and protons and electrons are revolving around them now students atomic number is what it is equal to the number of protons in an atom and this is also equal to now for an atom to be electrically neutral the number of electrons should be equal to the number of protons right say for example sodium its atomic number is equal to 11 so what will be the number of protons here it will be 11 and the number of electrons it will also be 11 right now students these electrons are distributed in various shells see here these are called as shells right now the shells are the K shell, L shell, K, L, M and N shells. It can be more also. Now each shell can accommodate 2 to the power N square number of electrons. Right? So the value of N for K shell is equal to 1 l shell what will be the value of n for l shell it will be 2 m it will be 3 n it will be 4 right now the distribution of electrons say k shell it will have two electrons l shell it will have 2 into 2 square that is 8 electrons m shell it will have 2 into 3 square that is equal to 18 electrons now students here do remember that if there are 18 electrons are not possible then there will be only 8 electron in the M shell and rest will be jumped up like potassium see the atomic number is 19 it means what will be the number of protons over here it will be 19 the number of electrons will also be equal to 19. Now let's distribute them. K, L, M, N. K 
K shell 2, L shell 8. How many are left now? 9 electrons left. Can there be 18 electrons in M shell? No. So there will be 8 and 1 will move up. Likewise, calcium if I take. The atomic number is 20. Right? So how will I distribute? K, L, M and N. So there will be 2. That is, each shell can accommodate 2 into 2 2 n square number of electrons. Now this will be 2 into 2 square that is coming out to be 8. 8 and how many are left now? 10 electrons more. So there can't be 18 electrons in m shell. So there will be 8 and 2. So this is how the electrons are distributed in atom. So students will be studying this, uh, this uh, model of uh, structure of atom and also the electronic configuration in details in your other lessons. Here I am just giving you an introduction. Right? Now, the atoms of other elements combine in order to complete their respective octate. That is, in order to attain 8 electrons in their valence shell. They try to complete their octate either by gaining, losing or sharing electrons. Like see here, this is sodium atom. The atomic number of sodium is 11. So what will be the number of protons here? It will be equal to 11. What will be the number of electrons here? It will be also equal to 11. Just distribute these in different shells. It will be 2, 8, 1. Now it is short of how many electrons? 7 electrons. If it is gaining 7 electrons from somewhere, it will have the configuration 2, 8, 8. But it is not possible to gain an electron, to gain 7 electrons. It will be large amount of energy will be required. So what it does, it loses one of its electron. Right? And ha uh, attains the configuration 2 and 8. That is a configuration of neon. Likewise, potassium. It has also got one electron in its outermost shell. So what it can do? It can lose its one electron and attain a noble gas configuration that is 2, 8 and 8. Likewise, magnesium. Magnesium has got two electrons. The potassium, uh, magnesium. The atomic number is 12. The number of protons is also equal to 12. So the number of electrons will be also equal to 12. Now there are two electrons in the outermost shell. How it will have eight electrons? It can lose these two electrons. See students, it is very difficult to gain six electrons. Why so? Because if it is gaining six electrons from outside, there will be force of repulsion also. Plus, how many protons are there within this nucleus? There are 12 protons. How can this 12 protons hold the, your, it will be 8, uh, 6 more, right? 18 electrons. It is not possible. So what it does? It loses 2 electrons and attains the configuration 2, 8. Likewise, calcium atom, it is 2, 8, 8, 2. So it will lose its 2 electrons and attain the noble gas configuration, right? Let's see a few more atoms. See the atom of nitrogen. The atomic number of nitrogen is 7. So the number of protons in nitrogen will be equal to 7. The number of electrons will be equal to 7. Now how these electrons will be distributed in different shells? 2 and 5. Now how it can gain a, a completed octet? That is have 8 electrons in its outermost shell by either gaining 3 electrons or by sharing 3 electrons, right? Likewise, oxygen, the atomic number is 8. So the number of protons in oxygen will be equal to 8. Electrons will be equal to 8, right? So what will be the distribution of electrons? It will be 2 and 6. How can it complete its octet? By gaining 2 electrons. Likewise, see fluorine. The atomic number of fluorine is 9. So how many protons will be there? 9. How many electrons will be there? 9. Right? So what will be the distribution? 2 and 7. These are the shells. K shell, L shell, 
again k shell l shell this is having k l and m so what it can do it will simply take up one electron and attain a noble gas configuration that is 28 likewise chlorine atom the atomic number is 17 the number of protons is equal to 17 and the number of electrons will be also equal to 17 now the electrons are distributed as 2 8 and 7 so this will also gain one electron and complete its octet right students so these atoms they combine in order to complete their octet see helium doesn't form compound neon doesn't form compound argon doesn't form compound because their valence shell or the outermost shell has got have got helium in case of helium two electrons in case of neon eight electrons argon eight electrons so all other atoms they either combine by either they either complete their octet by gaining or losing electrons or by sharing electrons right so now i'll be could this uh, students there are different types of bonds which are formed that is the ionic bond and the covalent bond and what is a bond bond is a force of attraction between the atoms of two elements So this ionic and covalent bonds you'll be studying in details in your higher grades, but the cations, the anions, you'll be will be discussing here, right? There is the formation of cations and anions. In the next session, we'll be discussing about the formation of cations and anions, right? And also the chemical formulae of compounds. So I'll be concluding this session, students. I'll be concluding this session, students, and in the next session, we'll discuss about the cations and anions. Right? So, thank you, students. I hope you have enjoyed this session, and do attend the next session, students. This is these are the basics of chemistry. If you are through with it, it will be it is going to help you always. So, thank you, students, and do have a nice time ahead.